Welcome to Wargear Reviews. If you've just bought yourself a brand new iPhone SE in 2022, here are a bunch of tips, tricks, and hidden features, and the first things you should do on your new iPhone SE 2022. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you guys is a few little tips. So if you swipe up from the bottom, you bring up the control center on your phone. And there's a bunch of shortcuts here that you might not know about. So let me show you real quick. So here where you got the Wi-Fi logo, if you hold that down, that opens up this window. Here, if you hold your finger down on the Wi-Fi logo again, you can quickly select between different Wi-Fi networks in your area. This can be really useful if you're looking for a public hotspot or something like that. This also works with the Bluetooth logo. So if you hold your finger down on the Bluetooth logo, all your previously linked Bluetooth devices will appear here in this list. And this will allow you to switch between those real quick. Some other shortcuts here in the control center is the ability to go to the brightness slider here. Here you can toggle between dark mode and light mode with this button at any time. You can also set the night shift. So this is where the screen will go slightly more orange, block out some of that blue light so it should help you get to sleep in the evenings. And then you can set True Tone on and off. Out of the box, True Tone is on, and I kind of feel like it makes the screen a little too orange. So I tend to turn that off and leave it off all the time. It's up to you, use that as you will, but just know there is the quick settings here. You can go into the settings menu and do the display settings and all that, but that's much longer. Another little quick trick that you might wanna know about here is the torch. So the torch actually has four levels of brightness. If you hold your finger down on that torch icon, you can switch between those levels of brightness whenever you want. I tend to just leave it on the brightest. And another little trick here is if you hold your finger down on this icon, you can set a timer and you can adjust the amount of time using these little bars. It goes up in minutes and then it goes up to five minute intervals and you can set it all the way up to one hour timer just by holding your finger down on that. And here's another one. If you use your calculator a lot on your phone, what you can actually do here is bring up the results from your last calculations and copy them into your clipboard so you can then use that later in another app if you need to. And then the last shortcut here is the camera and this might be maybe the most useful one and it's down here in the bottom right corner. Hold your finger down on that. You could take a selfie, record a video, take a portrait and take a portrait selfie. These are all just quick shortcuts so you don't have to go into the camera app to get to them. And this control center here, I'm gonna show you guys how to add more stuff to this if you want to later on in the video. So this is the out of the box setup when it comes to apps on the home screen. And one app I recommend you leave on the home screen definitely is the notes app. The reason being is there's a tool here that's incredibly useful. So if you hold your finger down on the notes app, you can go to scan document. So if you have a text document, essentially what this will do is open your camera and I'll show you the back of the iPhone box. We can scan the back of that box and here we can actually even convert this into a PDF if we want to. It's a very useful tool and you can even sign documents using the Notepad app as well. So this is a great little trick. Now, one of the advantages of this phone over the other iPhones out there is the fact that you actually have a home button. And actually it's not a button, it's actually a capacitive button. So you don't actually click it, but when you push it, it feels like it's clicking and you can actually adjust how it feels even more if you want to. And I'll show you how to do that. So go into settings, go to general, scroll down, go to home button. Here we're set on home button haptic one. So when we push the button down, it feels like it's clicking. If we set it to two, it's a slightly stronger click. And when we set it to three, it's more of a sort of delayed click. So there's three different ones to choose from here. Go through these and decide which one feels the best to you. I actually think number two that one feels like the strongest one. So I'm gonna keep it on that. So make the most of the home button because a lot of people don't have that. So you probably notice right now, I've got a pretty cool wallpaper in the background. And when I lock the screen, I've got this anime wallpaper as well. What you probably wanna do when you first get a new phone is customize the phone, make it your own, mess around with the apps and the widgets and all this kind of stuff. But wallpapers, I get a lot of questions about wallpapers. Where do I get them from? There's two places really that I use the most. Number one is Zedge. So Zedge is a great app. It's got ringtones and all kinds of stuff in here. So you have categories, you can scroll through, choose the wallpapers that you want and set them automatically through the app. But another place where artists like to share their work is Pinterest. And you can find quite a lot of customized artwork here. And you can also find similar artwork as well. So if you find a picture that you like, you can actually look up 
similar types of pictures to that one. Now, once you've found the artwork that you want to use as your wallpaper, just go to settings, scroll down to wallpapers, choose wallpaper, select the one you want to use, go to set, and then you can either set it to lock screen, home screen, or both. So I'm going to set it to lock screen. And that's it. So also what you can do here is set your wallpaper to a dark appearance. This is useful for the behind the apps wallpaper because if it's really bright, sometimes it can be very distracting and the apps can kind of get washed out by the wallpaper. So I tend to leave that on, but it does also dim the lock screen, which is a bit annoying, but up to you if you want to use that or not. All right, now going back to the control center setup, you swipe up from the bottom. These are the standard apps out of the box. I'm going to show you how to add more. So go to your settings here go to control center in the settings. Here you can add a bunch of stuff so that when you swipe up, you can have quick access to it. Stuff like dark mode could be useful. So you just hit the little plus next to it. Apple TV remote could be useful if you have Apple TV. Stopwatch, text size, wallet is a good one. So just play around with this, set it up how you like. And also when you add cards to your Apple wallet, you can actually switch between those cards on the fly here as well once they're set up. So that could be useful. So the next thing I wanna talk about here is the display. So if we go into settings, scroll down to display and brightness, and you can see I've got it set on dark mode. That's just what I like, but you can actually set it to automatic. So in the daytime, it's gonna be in light mode. At night, it's gonna go into dark mode. The other thing you can do here is toggle on true tone on and off, but this is important, night shift. So night shift essentially will add more warm tones to the screen in the evenings and eliminate some of the blue tones because some scientists say that if your eyes absorb too much blue light it actually messes with your sleep so it's good to set up the night shift you can schedule it to whatever you want your normal sleeping patterns and it will switch off automatically it's a good idea to set this up so spend a little time messing around with that i personally like dark mode especially on oled screens it saves more power as well it's only a little bit more power but it's better than nothing. So when you first set up your new iPhone, you are gonna scan in a fingerprint or thumbprint. You should add more. I think this is a good idea to do straight away because sometimes you wanna use your first finger or maybe your thumb on your other hand. So just having one thumb is not ideal and this is how you do it. So you go into your settings, touch ID and passcode, key in your code, go to add fingerprint and you just scan the second fingerprint. I just scanned the same thumb. <laughs> Probably just messed it up. Now adjust the grip, do it again. So I do recommend you set up your thumb and first finger on both hands. So that way, no matter which way you pick up your phone, you can unlock it quickly. So this is a small phone. And one of the downsides of a small phone is the fact that it's got a small battery. So we wanna make sure we're taking care of this battery. So go into settings, go to battery. Here you can show your percentage. So if you wanna know all the time how much battery you got left, you could have that visually displayed here instead of just the battery bar. I think that's a good idea. You've also got your low power mode, but this battery health is what you want to keep an eye on. At the moment, because it's a new battery in the phone, we can charge it to 100%. Later on, when more updates are released, you might find that Apple restrict the capacity of the battery, and I think you can override it. So keep an eye on that. Make sure it's 100%. It should be 100% out of the box, but make sure this is on optimized battery charging. So. If you charge a battery too much, too fast, it can ruin the longevity of that battery. So make sure that stays on. So I just wanna show you this just to keep an eye on it. It should be on default out of the box, but check it anyway, just to be safe. All right, now let's talk about camera. So let's go into settings, go to camera, scroll down to photographic styles. And if this is your first iPhone for a while, you've probably not seen this before. So you can actually, change the color tones of your photos and they kind of mimicked other phones that are very popular. For example, if we go across the rich contrast is very similar to that scene on the Google Pixel devices. The vibrant is very similar to Samsung. And then we've got the warm style. I'm not sure what that's similar to, but it just adds a lot of warm tones to the photo. And the cool style is a very bluish tone. Something else that I always do as a rule on pretty much all my phones is turn on the camera grid. So within the same camera settings, you see the grid here, when you turn that on, now when you go to your camera app, you have these faint lines here over the screen that won't be on the photos, but will help you compose a better photo. And just keep in mind those four intersections there in the middle, those are the sort of places where the human eye is supposedly naturally drawn to. So you want to line your subjects up or your photos up in general 
with those intersections of the lines. And you'll also notice when I'm looking straight down like this, see the little crosshair in the middle? If you line that up perfectly, that is the center of gravity. So you get a perfect downward shot. So just be aware of that. That will help you compose better photos. So that's a couple of photo tips. Let me give you a video tip now. Let's go into settings. Let's go to back to cameras. Let's go to video record. So right now it's set on 1080 30. The maximum we can shoot at is 4K 60. And that is very good. But if your memory is quite low, if you've got a 64 gigabyte memory, let's say, you probably don't want to leave it on that all the time. But just know this is where you can access it when you want to take better quality video. But this is what I want to show you at the bottom. Auto FPS. So here you can actually set it to auto 30 and 60 frames per second. So the phone will actually uses AI to tell you whether it thinks it should shoot in 60 or 30. The advantage of shooting in 60 frames per second is the footage can sometimes appear to be smoother. And also if you import it into a video editing software, you can actually slow down the footage by 50% and then match it to a 30 frames per second clip, but they all appear to be slow-mo. So that's a good little feature there. I do recommend set it to this. Also at night, if you try and shoot 60 frames per second, it's gonna be very dark. So the phone will automatically switch it to 30, which means you'll get better video footage at night if you have this on. So did you know there's a secret button on the back of the iPhone right here? Let me show you how to set it up. So go back to settings, go to accessibility, go to touch. And then here you want to go to back tap. Now you can set a double tap on the back of the device and a triple tap on the back of the device to perform an action. So let's say double tap, we want it to open the camera, triple tap, we want it to open Siri. So now that's set up, if I double tap with my first finger on the back of the device, it opens the camera. If I triple tap, it opens Siri. I didn't catch that, could you try again? So there you go, that's a little shortcut trick. Not many people know about that. So this next one is an important one and I think a lot of people overlook this and they should be using it and they're probably not. So if you have bad phone signal in your area, you absolutely should do this right now. Go to settings, go to mobile data. That might actually appear cellular in some countries. And here you see Wi-Fi calling. So we can switch this on. This might be network dependent as well. So your network operator might restrict you from doing this, but you should have this setting. So you can turn on Wi-Fi calling from this phone. And if you want to, you can even enable Wi-Fi calling from your other Apple devices as well. So I could actually make calls from my MacBook Pro or my iMac or my iPad if I wanted to by switching on this one. Definitely use this if you have bad signal. Keep in mind it will use data. So if you have a limit on your data usage, then you might wanna only use this when necessary. I do pay for a lot of data, so I might as well use it. So I switch it on all the time. So if you lose your iPhone, Apple do have the find my phone feature as standard. So you can log into your Apple ID and find it. But the worst thing that could happen is someone steals your phone and then they take the SIM out, put it in another phone, and that way they can use your call time and your data and even access your phone book. So it might be a good idea to set this up. It's called a SIM pin. So we go into settings, we go to mobile data again, and you see here, SIM pin. Go to this, turn it on, create a pin number. That will lock the SIM card on your device with a pin number. So if somebody takes the SIM out of your phone, tries to put it in another phone, they won't be able to access your data calls or contacts. That I think is an important setting. So it might be a good idea to set that up straight away. So one of the downsides to the iPhone SE is the entry level model is just 64 gigabytes. And this one is as well. And if I imported all my apps over from my other iPhone, this phone would literally be full almost straight away. But there is something cool you can do here to manage your storage a little bit better. So if we go into settings, we go to general, we go to iPhone storage, and here you can see this setting, offload unused apps. So if you enable that, apps that you don't use regularly will be offloaded, meaning it will clear the memory that it's using. And when you do go to use them again, you'll have to sort of load them up from scratch. But I do recommend you do this because you might have downloaded a bunch of apps that you never really use. You might think you do, but maybe you don't. And if you switch this on, the phone will decide as and when it should clear memory on your device so you don't use it all up 
And if you are the type of person that does have lots of apps, I do recommend you turn this on. So here's another little trick that you might or might not know about when it comes to iPhones. Let's say we're within an app like this one, Apple News, and we're scrolling down, we're scrolling down, we're scrolling down. We're scrolling forever and we want to get all the way back to the top without having to scroll all the way back you just hit the time at the top and there we go it automatically goes straight back to the top without you having to scroll this works on most of the native iphone apps it works on instagram and facebook and all this kind of stuff as well tap the time to go back to the top all right so did you know you can actually create a custom emoji that sits at the top of your screen permanently and the way you do this is by creating a focus mode. And focus mode is a very useful feature. So if we go into settings, we go to focus. Here we hit the little plus at the top corner. Let's go to custom. We can set a color for that emoji that we want to use. And then we could choose the emoji we want to use. So this is a red phone. So let's set it to red and let's use the flame. Red flame. We'll call this fire. And we hit next. Now what we can do is we can actually set a focus mode so we can allow people to call us that we want to allow and then we can block everything else. So we can really customize this as much as we want. So we can allow calls from myself or maybe calls from my favorite contacts. We can actually specify whatever we want. We hit allow and then we could choose what time we want this to run. My focus mode is ready. And now at the top, we have a little fire emoji. And this is a cool one because I bet a lot of your friends won't know how to do that. So now let's talk a little bit about the security on the iPhone. So iPhone security is fantastic, but there's still some tracking going on that you probably need to be aware of. So if we go into settings, go to privacy, go to tracking. Now here on this page, you'll have all of your apps and you'll be able to see which ones of them can track you. These are the only two apps I've installed so far, but you'll have a bunch of them. You can switch these on and off when needs be. Keep in mind some apps like Uber or something like that will need to know where you are in order to send cabs to the right place. So don't switch off all of them, just switch off the ones that you don't want tracking you. For example, Zedge and Pinterest don't need to know where I am all the time. Why would they? So switch them off. Be mindful of this, switch them off as and when. So if there's something strange in your neighborhood and it don't look good, who are you gonna call? I'm sure you already know the answer to that. And I'm gonna show you how to set up a way to call them really quickly without having to go into your phone book. So go into your settings, go to emergency and SOS. Here, we can set up a call with the power button and the volume rocker down. So if we hold that down like a squeeze, it will automatically call an emergency contact. And we can also set five presses of the power button to do the same thing. And then here we can go to set up emergency contacts and we can create a medical ID as well. So let's say you're allergic to penicillin or something like that. You might wanna set this up because if you're in a car accident or something like this, the paramedics will have a bit more information to work on. And also within the menu, you can set up who it should call other than the emergency services. So definitely set this up. It's one of those things that you probably won't ever need, but it's good to have it set up in case of an emergency. And the last tip I've got for you guys is to subscribe to What Gear Reviews because I've got way more iPhone tips and tricks for you guys in the future. And also if you like tech and all things tech, I think you'll like the content on the channel. And if you did get any kind of value out of this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That would make my day. A subscribe would make my month. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you guys in the next one. So don't be late.